Okay, we're going to, it's 1030, so we're going to uh, go ahead and begin. And I want to thank you for coming. I'm always happy to have some people in person. I think all of the presenters uh, are, are happy to have that. And uh, before we begin, uh, I want to have an official welcome from Pam Price. Pam is here in Alamos, but recovering from very serious case of pneumonia, and she's not ready to come out yet. So Pam, uh, give us a welcome. Okay, this is 2023, if you can believe it. So I welcome you to a new year of the Alamos History Association. And I'm so looking forward to Errol's very interesting and humane project. So with that, please begin, Errol. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to mention before we start, too, that uh, we have the next four programs, especially, are going to be great. And Susan is here. She'll be presenting next week at the meeting. And, uh, and I won't go into it, but it's on the conversos, uh, going back to the, uh, the early history, anyway, of, uh, of Spain and the Inquisition. And I'm looking in very much forward to that. Uh, the next week after that, uh, Bob Rink, who is chair of the Alamos Committee of the Scottsdale Sister Cities Commission, will be presenting about uh, a little of history, but also on the many projects that are currently underway between Scottsdale and Alamos, which first week in February, uh, we will be at uh, Dimitri and Angelica's house, the Rip Torn house. It'll be, the meeting will be there and they will provide a history and stories about that. So anyway, those are the next four and we will have meetings on up uh, through, you know, the, uh, the end of March. Okay, Carolyn, if you can uh, do the share and we'll start uh, our meeting. And first, I'm so happy Diane Carpenter is watching this and the meeting that I'm going to talk about that started this project, Diane was one of those that were there. I don't think any of you, I don't know, Craig and Sandra, if you were at that meeting, it was at the Cabot's house. And uh, Father Carpenter had started uh, giving mass weekly at the prison, Ceresso. Uh, and um, we have, this is the uh, one of the pictures, this was the title picture of the exhibit we had. But going back in 2008, we met, Father Carpenter invited the, uh, the prison director, uh, Alberto uh, Oros Figueroa, and he was the director at that time, and I think was director for about five years. And he wanted to have a program where the prisoners in Ceresso could make a friend uh, you know, maybe in the foreign foreign community, he thought, well, here in Alamos, maybe once a month, people would commit, you know, to going to Navajoa. They would line them up with uh, uh, an incarcerated person, maybe teach a few phrases in English, a friendship, perhaps. As he said in the meeting, that more than half of the prisoners there in Ceresso never had a visitor. And the prisons are more open, I think, here in Mexico, perhaps. I'm not an expert on it. So on many weekends, they have families come. And these, you know, so many of them had no family. Either they were disowned by their families or the families lived in other parts of Mexico and weren't able to come. Well, he had the meeting and Diane volunteered uh, to uh, participate and perhaps others did, but it never really took off. Uh, there weren't enough, anyway, volunteers. And, but at that meeting, I went up to uh, Alberto and I explained that if it's all right with the prison, I would like to take some pictures. Well, this kind of outlines the project and this is what I've been talking about. And um, anyway, the, at the left is uh, Alberto. And to his right is one of the pastoralistas, and that is uh, Martin Roberto uh, Vega Encinas, 
He was a reporter for the newspaper at that time was the Informador. It later changed to, and is still publishing its La Tribuna. However, Martin is, is no longer with the paper. Uh, he went into television and uh, he is broadcasting at, uh, you know, on one of the TV stations. Anyway, um, Martin was a real inspiration. He and a number of other pastoralistas worked with Father Carpenter and they set up the room. Uh, they brought in a crucifix because the room was just a, a typical normal small room held for meetings, 12 step programs, other things. So they set, they, they brought in materials to uh, make it, to, to give it the feeling anyway of, of a church. And um, anyway, there is uh, uh, the director out in the prison yard. Actually at this picture, we were looking at the possibility of raising money for a roof that was going to be over the workshop they had, a wood shop, uh, but that uh, uh, never, never really happened. Next. And this was the portrait uh, of uh, Alberto that I had in the exhibit. And that portrait was taken in his kitchen there at the prison. He was so proud of that kitchen. Uh, the prisoners did everything. And they brought in, he says, oh, the food is delicious. You've got to stay. But Father Carpenter had a schedule when he was in Navajo. He had to go to hospitals. He had to do other things, which I got to tag along and learn so much about his work. And uh, so we never did have uh, a meeting. Now, if you don't know about Father Carpenter, I think all of you that are here do, but maybe some out there, and especially since this will be uh, on YouTube, et cetera. Father Charles Carpenter came to Alamos in 1978, and he was one of the missionaries of Fatima. And this was a group founded by uh, Father Aloysius Elacuria, uh, in California, and uh, he took a group of young men to Portugal uh, in the early 70s and to establish uh, a mission order. And, the, and the, their work was to help the sick and the aged, and that was to be the mission that they, they started out with. Now, uh, over the years, Father, you know, they're now, the order is under the uh, diocese of Obregón, so they take their orders from the diocese, and uh, I know at times they fill in on, uh, Father Carpenter gives a mass at the church here many times, and they have other duties. Uh, Father Carpenter, before he came into the priesthood, was a uh, Peace Corps volunteer in Ethiopia, and, uh, and that, at that time, he was very much interested in languages, and interested in the world. And at some point he felt uh, through Father, when he morale wishes in California, uh, you know, he felt called anyway to the priesthood. And so he went then back to Portugal. He studied for five years in seminary in Spain, in Burgos. If you've been in Spain uh, or around Burgos is the coldest the coldest part of Spain, I think, that you could have. It was snowing when Carol and I were there in March. But anyway, and he studied five years in Burgos. Uh, he, you know, I don't know, he said at different times, I'm not sure how many languages he's completely fluent in, but, but he has a handle on nine different languages, but he said he's only preached in seven of them. So maybe the other two don't count. Uh, anyway, this actually, this portrait I took of him was in the prison, and, uh, and this is Father Carpenter teaching. Now, Father Carpenter saw his role as primarily as a teacher, and he loved the work, uh, and this is at the seminary in Obregón, well, actually, northwest uh, of Obregón, and I think it's called Providencia, and uh, he taught there for many years, and he filled uh, uh, many roles, but he sees himself as a teacher, a student of philosophy. He has a doctorate degree. His uh, doctoral dissertation was on the life of St. Bonaventure, Bonaventura, and, um, and he's published two books. He published a book on his thesis and as well as one on Father uh, Al, you know, Aloysius. And this was uh, another picture of him then in the seminary um, you know, when he was teaching. Okay, next. 
Now, if you go to the seminary here in Alamos, the monastery, that is, if you go to the monastery, there's a gate and this is what you see. And it does, you know, you don't really know what's hidden behind there. They have a little bell and you have to ring the bell and a few minutes later, somebody will come and it's, it's kind of a, it's, you know, a secluded uh, kind of a spot. But once you get in, uh, this is what you will see. And I have encouraged Father Carpenter to open that up to a History Association tour. Uh, this is the main house. Now, the history of that house, it was built by the governor of Sonora between 1939 and 1943. And uh, that was, uh, let's see, uh, well, anyway, Macias. Uh, I can't think of his first name now, but anyway, Governor Macias, he was a general, and uh, um, boy, I wish I could think of his name, but Macias is the last name. Now, when he passed away, his family ran it as a, a motel or hotel, and for many years, uh, now that's the main building, and this is where the priests are, the reception areas, and et cetera, but over to the left, you have the rooms that were the motel, and these are where the seminarians uh, stay. Over to the right, uh, behind the fountain there, over to the right, you have a meeting room, uh, a, a lunch room, et cetera. And then uh, inside, uh, you know, you have the chapel and that's where they, they have services like four or five times a day, uh, many different services, a beautiful little chapel. And then um, another anyway picture that's inside those those uh, stained glass windows were made I, either in Navajo or Obregón. And next, and, and then when you come inside to meet with Father Carpenter or another person, uh, you'll sit here in the reception room. And the reception above the fireplace in the reception room is a picture of Father Aloysius. And Father Aloysius, uh, this was a picture from the early 70s. That is a young Father Carpenter receiving a blessing from Father Aloysius. And I tried to get, uh, I wanted to get the original negative of this picture, uh, but the photographer has passed away. But that's a scan and, and that's good enough for all practical uh, purposes uh, anyway. And these were the priests that, this picture was like seven years ago. And because you have priests that are part of the uh, the order, then you have the seminary students uh, that that come, they actually come and go. It's a 10 year process to become a priest. And so a lot of people come in, they stay a year, they may even stay less than that and say, this isn't for me. Uh, and others, of course, uh, uh, is not pictured here, but Father Fernando, for instance, uh, I have got a picture of him later. Uh, he is one who, you know, entered the priesthood uh, right here from Alamos. And, but anyway, these were the eight priests that were there uh, for that picture anyway. And in the front row seated, uh, you know, second from the right is Father Cesario, who passed away probably more than five years ago. And it was Father Cesario who was the inspiration for the replica chapel that's across from the monastery, uh, the replica of the Fatima chapel. And you, you've seen that, I'm sure, many times. Uh, they ruined that spot when they had a, a gypsy uh, whatever in there for a while, but that's gone and they're working. And I always hope that a prayer garden, garden uh, can be used uh, anyway in that spot. When you go into Ceresa, when you look at it from the outside, it's got a chain, whatever, I mean, a <laughs> dungeon, up 15 feet with razor wire on top, et cetera. But once you get inside, okay, this is the administrative building and behind that uh, are the courtyards and the cells for the prisoners. And the uh, and it, it's, it's a very nice place. Uh, the prison guards have offices there, the prison staff, and of course the director. And that's uh, anyway in Cereso. Now, when you arrive, uh, first, uh, we would always get there early to make sure that uh, the, all the people uh, that were going to be present that day would come in. And so we would visit with Aldoberto and others. And then uh, we went in through kind of a turnstile 
into the prison itself. We, we could take nothing in uh, with us, no, no wallets, uh, no keys, uh, all of these things they kept, or we just simply didn't bring them. Uh, and I, I was fortunate enough at one time to bring in a tripod and a light stand for an umbrella when I did some portraits. And that was, uh, that was kind of a, <laughs> a new experience for them, you know, to, to have that in, but uh, they allowed it in. They were very cooperative. Uh, once you go inside, over to the left, as you're walking in toward the courtyard, are the cells of the recent uh, prisoners who arrived. And uh, these were the people that really, you, you know, that needed help. They were lost. They had been assigned there waiting to know what their future would be. They had not been tried. They'd been arrested. And those people, you know, I felt so sorry for them because you walk right by, and you, buenos dias, buenos dias. And, but but you, you just wondered, um, and, and you could see how worried uh, they were about uh, their fate. Now, once... Once you uh, got into the room, uh, then we had the pastoralistas, uh, which were anywhere from five to seven. Uh, they set it up. They put the, the Virgin of Guadalupe over there. They had, and they, uh, they had the crucifix. And uh, Father Carpenter would start, uh, anyway, the, uh, the mass for the day. And of course, it would be a typical, but you go to a mass here in Alamos or anywhere in a Catholic church, you have the various things, you have the music, uh, and, and they had more in this mass than I think in any others on the one-to-one -one with the congregation who were the prisoners. And because they would each, the prisoners, there would be a time for them to talk about things uh, uh, that they, you know, that they needed. Uh, anyway, we had anywhere from 15, 25 people that would come there for a regular mass. The bishop came once and I photographed it and they wanted to make sure a lot of people were there. So they put the bishop out in the main courtyard and they probably coerced a lot of people to come uh, for it. So the bishop would have a good crowd, but that was a normal kind of a crowd and that we would have. And Father Carpenter would give his announcements. The internees would then read the scripture, um, mm -hmm. and they took time. And the internees, uh, many of them, were kind of in charge of the whole process uh, of, of doing this. The next, and this is Father uh, Fernando, who uh, he was just a seminarian then, uh, but now, of course, uh, he's he's a priest. And the seminarians helped out. Uh, the music, there's uh, Martine in the center, but the two internees there with their guitars, seeing so many people had guitars and they played the music. And I, re I did some video work of uh, the songs in the service, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, I do have uh, some and I, I may send out a link to that uh, later. Anyway, the music was part of every service and they sang with such enthusiasm uh, you know, and, and they had, I don't know if the prison guitars or whatever, Carol, go on to the, the next. And, um, and then they, of, of course, now the lady is one of the pastoralistas, but, uh, you know, as they sang, they would raise their hands. And I have five or six pictures of them getting very much involved in the service. And at times, uh, Father Carpenter in some ways felt uncomfortable it, it was more like a, a, a holiness. Uh, you know, there was, there was real enthusiasm and praise in that service. And of course, you know, in a normal mass here, it's much more reserved. And at times he felt a little uncomfortable, but he was so happy, uh, you know, with, with the work there. I've got about, uh, you know, like uh, uh, five or six pictures, Carol, you can leave like uh, six or uh, seven seconds on a picture. Uh, but during the time, and of course they had then, uh, they put up posters. And uh, during the time it was, it was uh, the prayer, the praise uh, was such an important element of it. I like the picture, the guy in the center looks like he's being arrested with <laughs> but uh, no, he's raising his hands too. He's like, yes, his hands uh, up there. Oh, and this one, uh, hold this one a second. Uh, they had their own little uh, 
phrases that they would sing and they would uh, shout out. And this one, they had muy bien, chavo muy bien. And it's, uh, you know, like, thank you, Jesus, you know, whatever, muy bien, chavo, chavo is, was, was a, you know, a word. I don't think that's common, but anyway, for Jesus Christ that they would use. And they would just shout out, you know, the singing was loud and the shouting. And oh, the, the gentleman over there to the right, I have other pictures of him. But uh, this was just, uh, yeah, keep going. You, you were doing it right, uh, the servant. The, the man there on the front row um, that's over there to the right, um, unfortunately, he was released and he was at all the services. And then I saw in the paper a few months later, he had been arrested again and was back. And I felt sad because he was a very big part of the service. Anyway, these are the internees uh, within the service of service itself. Okay, Carolyn. Um, okay, during the time that they had, they passed the mic and they would they would give comments. They would ask them to share something. And those mostly became requests of problems that they had that were just overwhelming. And of course they were here and there was absolutely nothing they could do about the problems other than, than to share them. And so they were, you know, this whole service was a support group as well uh, to where they had an, an opportunity to anyway, to help each other go to the next. Now, also in the service, we had the communion. Uh, when I was there, they had one service. They had a first communion uh, for, um, you know, for internees that had never, uh, uh, you know, received communion or had never been baptized into the Catholic Church. And uh, so they, every, every Mass, of course, had the communion, or communion picture from the other side. I see those fans in there. Uh, and I photographed in there in August, and it was so hot uh, in that little room. But they did have fans, of course. And then in the winter, it was very cold. Uh, this was, uh, Martine wrote a story. This was a baptism, Father Carpenter baptizing. I wasn't there to photograph it uh, that they received uh, in, in the prison. And, I, you know, this, I, I think this is the role of the pastoralistas. Uh, most of these, now they were all ages, young men, older men. There were a couple of women or three, but they didn't really participate in this uh, service. And I'm not sure the, the story on that. It was only primarily the Sereso had men. Uh, and if there was the pastoralises, like the laying on of hands, letting people know, uh, we care for you. Uh, we want to help you. Okay, and that was an important uh, part of the service. And of course, Father Carpenter took confessions, uh, but he also, uh, you know, gave support uh, to the prisoners that were there. One of the pastoralistas is to the left, and uh, they were praying for the prisoners uh, with the prisoners that had a need. And this guy was, uh, I, can't, I wish I could remember his name, because uh, when we, we put the exhibit of some of these pictures up into the prison, uh, he came over, Carol and I were putting it up and he came over, he was so happy. He says, I was in four pictures, you know? <laughs> and he was so pleased. And I wondered how they would react to this because I asked the director, I asked Altoberto, um, you know, stop it there for a second, yeah. uh, back up one there. Uh, and I asked Alberto. I said, what, you know, do we need permission? Do we need a written permission? He says, they'll be excited if their picture is in an exhibit. Uh, it, it, will, it will give them much pleasure. You don't need to worry. But then he said, well, if any of them complain, they'll have to go through me. So don't worry about it. <laughs> but they were all so happy to have their picture that was in there. Um, Anyway, uh, uh, another gentleman, gentleman, anyway, during during the service. And there were, you know, they would kneel down and pray, and there were tears uh, as part of this, and they all received support uh, from those uh, pastoralistas. 
that were there. And, and I can say that in these services, okay, one thing here, the friendships. At the end of the service, uh, people, <laughs> the, the friendships emerged and there were hugs and, and comments. And uh, the prisoner on the left, uh, we had been released and uh, was doing well the last I heard. And we asked him to come to the exhibit that we had uh, here in the uh, museum. Uh, it never worked out, but anyway, he was a very active member. And that's the same guy there uh, at a different service. But the hugs after the service, the conversation, uh, making them feel uh, they were really a part, that their life had value and they were an important part of the community. Uh, anyway, more on the friendships. Okay. Now, the one time, uh, hold that for a second, the bishop came. And so Alberto made sure he, he had uh, most of the prisoners there. Carolyn, move it forward. And <clears throat> so we had a large group. They had several in attendance uh, that were aides to the bishop. That's Martine to the center and right. Go to the next one. And uh, so they probably had 150 people or more. There were 250 uh, uh, in the prison at that time. And, and they, when the bishop gave the mass, and this was the communion uh, given by the bishop. And there was Father Carpenter, of course, on the left and the bishop. And, and that was the same uh, uh, Virgin of Guadalupe poster that was in there. Now, it was great for me to get pictures when the bishop was there because I really wasn't given access to the whole courtyard. It was kind of restricted. You can go in and photograph the map. But when the bishop was there, I could walk around and take pictures anywhere. And uh, I really, it was exciting for me to see in the big courtyard, uh, everybody that, you know, that, that was there. And uh, anyway, these were people that weren't at the regular services. Now, this is outside our little prison chapel. So those people were all part of the service, but the others were, were not. Now, on a weekend one time, they had a family day. And so the, the attorneys brought in their, uh, you know, their children came, their wives came, and you just... Now, girlfriends came probably, but you just wondered how their life had been changed from this and, and what they were going through. And there's my, my friend, that was his niece. He wanted a copy of that picture. And so I printed it off at Photo Rapido and got it to him. And he was very pleased to get that. Uh, for her quinceanera. Yeah, I forgot that. That's what it was for. But he wanted a picture. And there, uh, you know, a father and his, you know, his two kids. And they, uh, oh, anyway, they were, we'll stop it here for a second. But uh, they all, there, there seemed to be such, you know, it wasn't like we think of the prison and hate. You never felt, felt that there. These were just a group of people. And I think that surprised me, at least. Okay, go back. Now, I did portraits. I mentioned about bringing a tripod and a, a you know, a, a, a display stand, umbrella stand in. And so I just asked around, who would like to have a portrait? And I didn't prompt them or anything. And, uh, and so they, they took their own pose. And, uh, and so I just clicked, clicked the camera and, and took, uh, took any way their picture. And they, uh, this guy had kind of a smirk and smile. And then I think the next one too, but uh, most of the people that was very solemn, uh, he's not the one I was thinking was next. But uh, anyway, I just lined them up and, and uh, took their picture. And they were, they were quite uh, happy to oblige. I like this portrait, go back to that. Um, you know, because of the eyes and looking up and, uh, you know, I really, I get a feeling from that portrait of, of kind of the inner turmoil or whatever that he was going through. And this guy was just having fun. He put his hand up because in the poster behind him, it was Jesus with his hands. So he put his hand up like that. 
this was not a formal portrait. I've got a couple that were just snapshots uh, that were taken of people uh, there, you know, within the prison. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, they did have a, uh, within the prison, they had a woodworking shop and you can see tables back there. People would sand and cut wood. They made picture frames. When we had, uh, for the pictures that we have in City Hall of the uh, previous Presidentes, uh, we could have, I'm, I'm sure they're still doing it, at Ceresso is making uh, pictures. And of course, then the, the money goes to uh, the people, back it up one. Um, and he was uh, there sanding, uh, uh, what are those, Carolyn? Cabinet doors. Cabinet doors and which the, they made and they sanded out and, and they got the money. I don't know how the money came, but, uh, but they were paid for their effort, okay? And uh, anyway, he, he is making a picture frame. And uh, when we had our uh, exhibit, uh, Alberto gave Father Carpenter uh, an award on a frame that had been done uh, there in the prison. Now, the exhibit, uh, it was in the fall of 2010, and it was at the museum, and, and every fall, every November, Tony has a special presentation to usher in the anniversary uh, of the museum. So um, our uh, exhibit was that special presentation. So anyway, Carolyn and I brought the pictures and we hung them up and I had them uh, matted and, uh, you know, everything. Well, we framed them ourselves, but we had them matted in Phoenix. And I did, I had some individual pictures. I also, as you can see, there were some groupings. When I had five or six pictures that kind of related to each other, um, you know, I put them uh, together for the exhibit. And this was in that auditorium there, uh, you know, in the museum. And uh, Tony offered to help us put this up together, but we kind of wanted to take our time and do it, okay? And so we, we did it all ourselves. On the opening night, of course, they cut the ribbons. You gotta cut a ribbon here in Mexico. So they cut the ribbons and Aldoberto's to the left. And of course, Tony, uh, is left of him. I don't know the lady, maybe some of you may know uh, know her. But anyway, this was in the opening night and Alberto gave us our awards next. And uh, then there were speeches and there were questions. And I remember Tony uh, saying one of his comments in there uh, to the group. They've really never had anything in the museum <laughs> quite like this, you know. Uh, they've had all kinds of art things, but something locally uh, here, uh, a work like this that they just never, never had. And then after the official presentation, uh, you know, Father Carpenter, uh, there were many questions and uh, some of the people in there, we, that's Richard there. Oh, and we got plenty of newspaper publicity too, you, because Martin was a reporter. <laughs> so they had a big story in the newspaper on the first day of the exhibit. And then they had, when the exhibit was up, they had another story. And then the Air Museum paper picked it up. And uh, anyway, they, they also ran a story. I don't have a copy of that. And so they were getting quotes from me or whatever the, the case. Uh, but it, it was different. And I wish we had pictures of putting up the exhibit in the prison, but we don't. Uh, Carolyn, you might have brought your little, you know, point and shoot digital that you had at that time, but I don't have any. And that was an interesting part of that. On a weekend, when the families were going to be there, we hung 35 pictures uh, onto those stone prison walls pounding nails in, et cetera, et cetera. And the prisoners were all helping and putting them up. And I, I know there were some group shots. Uh, one, the newspaper from Aramosia, I don't think it was impartial, I think it was Expresso. 
but uh, they had kind of a group shot of all of us and uh, putting, putting that together. But we had them up, uh, it was just for a weekend, and then we went over and took them down. But that way, the attorneys and their families, some cases, children, parents, whatever, uh, you know, could see the show. And they were so excited to have those pictures uh, there in the, in, in the prison. Well, that's, that's my presentation. And um, anyway, if you have questions uh, or anything, and that's from the Zoom people or from the people out here, uh, I'll answer them. I wish Father Carpenter could be here. Uh, when I started planning this, I was hoping that he would be able to come and, and share his experiences. Let me, let me tell uh, kind of before questions, uh, uh, kind of let me tell you one other thing. Um, I took pictures for, for almost three years. And uh, when we kept, I think toward the end, they replaced the director. The directors, at least in that whole, were political appointments. And so Aldoberto was appointed by Governor Boers, uh, who was governor from uh, 2003 to 2009. And so when Governor Patres came in in 2009, you knew that all of the prison people in Sonora were going to be changed, and they were. The new director had a whole different... Now, they, I think the ministry continues in the prison to today, but the new director was not interested in the kinds of things that we had started, like putting a roof and helping and, and getting more activities and all. And so it really ended for me in 2011. And I was sorry to see that. Okay, questions, any questions? Uh, yeah. Errol, this is Diane. Yes, Diane. I was, in, oh, this is just a fabulous, Oh, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed. It's just so beautiful. Um, I, I was interested in the various women there, and were they? Yes. Uh, can you tell me more about them? All of the women that I had photographed were uh, the church workers, the the lay volunteers from the church that okay. were helping prisoners. Uh, we never had a woman attorney, there were several, but we never had one in the service. They were on a separate side of the prison. Okay. But those, those ladies uh, were so loving and they became, I think, uh, mothers to some of the young kids that were in prison there. The mother they never had. Okay, Susan. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, Can you repeat it, Errol? We can't the question hear was, Yeah, the question was by Susan, uh, were this, was this a minimum security prison? And that question came up at that very first meeting that Diane attended. Well, is this a minimum security? And so Aldoberto, uh, you know, he, he just said, oh, yes, everything, whatever. Now then, in further questioning, Aldoberto, Aldoberto mentioned, well, actually, uh, we have some murders and rapists. And, you know, because what it is, is kind of a holding place. A person is arrested. They haven't been tried. They've been arrested. They go to the Sereso and wait the trial. Now, usually these people are in, in uh, cells. You know, but yet, yeah, there are, there were, it's minimum security in a sense, but there are some hardcore people uh, that were there. Weren't a lot of those hardcore in cells. They were in cells. Yeah. Any of the people that I've photo shown photographs of uh, were the minimum security type because. Uh, they were in part of the prison community, had access to the courtyard. Errol, this is Barbara Kiernan. You don't see oh, me yeah. on the Zoom, but because my camera's broken, but I'm here in, in the flesh. And I just want to tell you, I want to second what Diane said. This is a remarkable 
a presentation. It's not history as in something that happened 500 years ago. It's history in the making. And it's really a part of the social fabric of what we live in every day. So thank you so much for bringing this. I had never uh, even thought about this. Um, I would love to see if we could go in and visit that monastery someday. I'll be there in March. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I know that you can make an appointment uh, with Father Carpenter. I'm sure he'll be here and uh, see it. And uh, he's, you know, it's not something they do very often. And they would have to clean and do like that monastery. Carolyn said before, it kind of needs a woman's touch. Uh, to <laughs> to get it ready for a group uh, to come, and uh, but it's uh, I know any of you, Barbara, you can certainly visit, and uh, we can set that up. Uh, okay, any other questions? I think yeah. Okay, I have a question. This is Pam speaking. Um, can you tell us about the pastoralistas? Where did they come from? And were they part of the church group that the women were part of? What were their duties? Very good. Uh, thanks for asking that question, Pam. <laughs> All of the pastoralistas came from the main church there in Navajo, uh, that large church, the Iglesia. Um, you, if you've been downtown Navajo, and I'm sure all of you have, uh, you know the big uh, church. It's not a cathedral, it's a parroquia, but anyway, they all were associated with that church, including Martin, who was kind of the director. And so it was part of a an outreach of the church within the diocese. And so these, they would come in more than once a week. I only saw of them once a week, but they would come to the prison maybe two or three times, and they would provide whatever help they could, and uh, the prison director would use them, uh, you know, you, he would need their help or even get advice from them. They were just wonderful people. After this project, a uh, uh, wonderful evening with the pastoralistas, and it was just such a great time. I got to see them apart from, uh, you know, being there in the prison. And we, we just had a wonderful experience. His home was in Bacobampo, and that's not a place that you may have ever gone to, but it's uh, straight west of, of Navajo over, you know, over towards Huatabampo. Bampo, by the way, means water in the language, the Mayo language. So I learned that from Father Carpenter. <laughs> I hope he's right. Okay. But does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I have another sort of observation or question. I gather there were about 250 internos, but did you say that 30 to 35 people would show up for mass? That's true. That's true. Yeah, we, there were many people. Uh, Carolyn, could you put stop share? on there and then we get there were many people in the prison population that never came for the mass and the only time i saw them was when the bishop was there and they they kind of required a larger group but it was just 30 35 people uh that were there at most of the services we started uh just before 2008 and they had other church groups in the prison before uh, the Diocese of Obregón said, hey, uh, we have a need there. Uh, we have work to be done. And Father Carpenter was tapped uh, to lead that. And I, as far as I know, it's continuing. I think it's uh, still continuing. Susan, you had a question. Let's get... Yes. Yeah. Can you repeat that, please? The question, the question was, do they have any rehabilitation programs there at the prison. They do have the wood shop. I had pictures of that. And are there any other programs? And now, of course, this is, I can't speak about Cereso today, but they did have, first of all, counseling. Uh, you know, they, I don't know how mandatory, uh, but they, 
a part of their staff was working with uh, the internees, the, uh, the prisoners, uh, to help them. But now how effective or what their, uh, their rate of, uh, of uh, you know, prisoners returning and all that, I don't know how that went. But I do know uh, there were some successes out of the prison. And then the, some of them who did their time uh, went right back in too, because we have got examples of that. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, uh, we are going to close uh, this meeting of the Alamos History Association. And we thank all of you watching on Zoom. Uh, I will uh, try to, within a day or two, get it online. It's hard to put it, uh, put it on YouTube because of my internet connection. <laughs> but we will, we will try to do that. So thank you very much. Everyone. Well, thank you, Errol. Thank you. Thank you, Errol. Bye-bye.